Hi everybody. Hello. Hi everybody. How are you? Hello. Hello. Hi. Do you hear us well? Hi. I don't know where to look. Which camera to look? This Is it one. Here this one. This one. No, but here I can see myself. I look so cute. But you're not gonna look <laughs> there. What do you mean? You always look cute. Oh, yeah. you always so ador adorable. Yes, I always Maybe look even, cute. No. You Why? You took the whole seat. I told him take your own chair. He said, this no, I want to sit next to you. This is it. Because I wanted to be on the camera and this seat is really, really low. It's not from my height. What do you mean? It's not for your height. What are you talking about? I'm little. You're... It's tall or is it short? Which one is it? You guys are so frisky tonight. I Ma love it. Make up your mind. <laughs> Anyways, guys, hi. And next time, in this little waiting time, we're gonna put the fun little song but that created for us long time ago but we've never really I, I don't I couldn't find it at such a short notice I mean short notice being since I remembered I want to put it so next time we promise we're gonna have our little jingle ready for when you're in a queue waiting for us to show up anyways I just wanted to I just wanted to make a like five minute time and um, just Somebody is real not on mute. What's going on over there? Oh, that's okay. Good. Good, good. What did you want to say? I wanted to say that I wanted to make a little bit of time with Costa. Who is not on mute? Somebody is washing dishes or prepping aloe foil for their dinner reheating. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to start just in a minute. Um, I'm... I'm uh, I'm just like admitting people as they come. Wait, while you're admitting, let people see me a little bit. They're gonna see you for an hour. They can see you both. Exactly. I'm out in the focus, out of focus, in the focus, out of focus. Okay, guys, we're gonna start literally like in two minutes. A uh, wow, couple things. So, I'm gonna be. Wait a second, Mavida, before there is new people. I've, I made, you guys know that I made this public for the very first time, like ever on all of my social media it's kind of a big deal uh meaning there might be some new people who have no clue what's going on over here and what's gonna happen and hence you're sitting next to me on this chair so what is it that you would say to people who have never been on a call like this before what can they expect buckle up it's about to get weird exactly listen i just wanted to tell this Please. Okay, I'll, I'll explain and it then, in a second. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, mute yourself when you don't speak, when it's your turn, unmute yourself. I'm gonna be in charge of... Not in charge, really. I don't like this word. Just but monitoring uh, the queue of questions, patience with me, because we might have a lot of people. So I know Angelica gonna go first, I saw, and then Patrick Cito. And then whoever wants to ask the questions, just hit me, give me a nudge on the, uh, give me a nudge on the uh, chat, okay? And that's it. Let's start in two minutes, eight or five. And meanwhile, you can actually do the blah, blah, blah that you wanted to do. <laughs> Are you gonna still be sitting while I'm blah, blah? No, I'm leaving, I'm oh. going. <laughs> Love you, enjoy. <laughs> Quickly, two minutes. Two minutes, bye. Bye. No, maybe that we're in public. Professional. 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 Bye. 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 <laughs> okay. So, as few more people gather in, um, I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for everyone coming who is coming today. Um, and uh, for everyone who shared about this open call, you guys know we do this once every month and uh, it's always so much fun to see uh, so many new people come but also people who come in and join on these um, open calls regularly every month too also everyone from our difference makers program who don't want to skip the beat and the week and they join as well um, so yeah it's really really exciting for me this one is a little bit special because as I mentioned uh, you know I kind of uh, uh, got into this whole thing of like there's no more boundaries about this work work that we're doing in terms of you know it took a couple of years to shift a little bit uh, and settle into the the identity of 
of doing what we're doing and not really measuring up with all these different contexts, especially in my, my ballroom dance world contexts where, you know, it's been a predominant thing for about 25 years. So it took a second, but I felt, felt a little click. So now it feels even more wide open. So I'm sure conversations today will be great and potent in that way too. Um, and also, um, we also want to like introduce um, kind of ourselves a little bit more beyond just Viola, especially, you know, Armand and, and I, we, we are planning to go and do some more stuff on YouTube soon. And we've been dancing with social media here and there, but we decided that this is the best place to, place to start. So after about 90 minutes of uh, question answer dance with Viola, uh, we are gonna have an open time for about you know 15 20 30 minutes as many questions as you guys have and we'll use an opportunity for that to kind of tell you what are all of the news that are coming up because quite honestly oftentimes we do want to say especially I want to say but um, kind of you know things take turns throughout the week with everything else that we're doing and and this feels like a very focused time to do it so um so afterwards whoever wants to stay stick around for those little q a's or quite of or, or few shares that we're gonna have you're more than welcome to do that too and uh, for all of the new people so you guys um know what's going on here um so you're you came to, to a session to a broadcast workshop where i will um quiet my mind for a moment, um, I will get into um, a meditative kind of state where I kind of change a perspective a little bit. In other words, I get to put all of my opinions, judgments, thoughts, beliefs um, a little bit aside. So you have um, uh, an opportunity to get a reflection of what you have going on in your life based off of the question that it's active within you, based off of the um, things that you do want to put in form and formulate as a question too. Uh, whether you just want to be on the call and bask in different conversations or just bask in a vibe of positive energy, even though we are remote. Now you're not in the same room with, with us, with me here. You're gonna have um, an opportunity to bask in the lovely positive energy. Ah, oh, so cute, thank you was bothering him my hair is growing so now he says continue when he interrupted me so anyways um yeah buckle up sit down enjoy be active um or just sit aside and and enjoy the vibes of all of the wonderful questions and he's really eager he came in like three times now so if we're ready off we go let's do it Here now, present, in this moment, in every moment, at all times, your wider perspective, that perspective from which at all times you can observe your physicality. We know it might sound weird to you that you can observe that which is your reality and that which is what's going on within your physical environment but at all times you have an opportunity when you decide so when you get into a little bit of practice to step aside for a moment in terms of perspective to disperse the sharpness of your focus outwards and to see things from a wider zoomed out a little bit with a little bit of a distance perspective that which you often receive from others you call it wisdom you call it a good tip or advice that reflection that comes through other people or you observing other situations 
at all times you have access to that within your own focusing mechanism too and so this is really what's happening in these conversations for you when you come into the setting like this Armand and Costa have been doing their homework of keeping steady providing this steady environment where you can ease up when you can relax enough to see your question clearly so you can receive an answer or to feel steady enough because you joined into this wonderful environment so you can look in to some sticky pot spots within that which is your creation process and therefore formulate the question that will create the movement in a desired way for you. We're eager to hear what's on your mind today. Go ahead. Yes, what's been on my mind uh, quite a bit as I, I tune into that broader perspective is this idea of black holes, how they are like a vacuum and they're empty, but yet there's so much fullness and there's creation and the birthplace of new planets from those black holes. So I was just wondering, as we um, sort of, um, you've been uh, mentioning quite a few times about like releasing the identities and or attachment to identities. And as we are more steady in this broader perspective, this knowing of ourselves as the infinite beings and as the creators of every single reflection and even when we forget, we soon come back to that awareness and we interact with those mirrors in a way that still keep us in the knowing that it is all a creation emanating from within. So I'm just curious as to, as we you know, become more steady in that perspective, is do we still have that question, answer, focus and focus dance, or is there more of a, and allowing, just like the black holes, more of a bursting out of that oneness through that vessel, um, more of an exploration of interest versus question, answer versus focus or creation through focus. It's more of a dispersed perspective giving birth to allness, wholeness, still with uniqueness through this unique lens but it's is is broader in its inclusivity and its love and its harmony uh so i'm just curious as to well there is there is no a a, there's no necessity for you to give birth to wholeness because that is your natural state so we will start there in this wider dispersed perspective you are whole at all times and you might feel a little bit of separation from that wholeness or you might feel like you have a little bit of awareness in a different direction for a moment or two sometimes even predominantly that you're not aware of that which is divinity that you are embodied but what we want to bring to your attention is that from your receiving physical mechanism at all times you're in the balance between the question and the answer no different than in that which you've described as creation of planets. And so in that which seems to be a bigger creation for you, so let's say that comparatively for measurement purposes, there is a creation of a little rock that you observe next to you, something that's so tangible within you, and you can see that it is a part of something different something different than physical you but still part of something different in physicality you can then contemplate and receive the ideas of how this rock came to be in the physicality but there is no difference between that and a birthing of the whole planet or a solar system in that way the concept is the same the process is the same but there is the difference in the potency of the asking and therefore there is no elimination of the asking so you can experience all of that but rather other way around there is a bigger asking and therefore the balance might be even feeling the same but the 
movement is bigger because the asking is bigger. So you do not need to feel the difference in your steadiness when it comes to the balance because the balance is the natural state of your creation process. You would cease to be physically focused if that was not the case. It is just how you are perceiving the balance from your vantage point moment after moment after moment after moment. And so when you get to the perspective where you can see that the balance is the nature, that steadiness about that be can become your deliberate work, you holding the reins of the creation, meaning how long you stay in each aspect of your creation process and therefore balance, well then you can add the speed and then you can add the width, but that brings only way more movement and that just exaggerates and brings the asking to be bigger and bigger and bigger and more inclusive. When we say bigger, you might measure it up sometimes by bigger house, better car, more money, more friends, more harmonious relationships, more positive feeling emotions, all of that being, being along the way as a consequence of the work. But when we say bigger, we talk about your inclusivity. But when you're more inclusive, you are not less focused. It is that the focus does not bother you. It does not bother you so much that you can include and be mother to the world or be included in that with where you can sense even your contribution to birthing of the planets. Wow. <laughs> that is so beautiful. Thank you. I adore what you just said, the answer about inclusivity, because that's one thing that I've noticed that emptiness, that representative of the black hole, is that emptiness of my my consciousness from all of those things we just mentioned about the house, the car, the thing. It's like this is a complete detachment and it's more of a game, a play, a, a playful uh, engagement, but no attachment. So there's an emptiness and a freedom and uh, a beautiful allowing of more inclusivity of, of that love. I, I just adore that. Uh, just one uh, more question. Um, why does the unfocus, what, why does meditation sort of seem to upgrade our operating system and our broadens our perspective? Can you just explain Because it gets, you to the the it gets you to the perspective where you can be in this equanimous place. In other words, predominantly, you used to want to quiet your physical body. We're talking generationally now. You wanted to quiet the activity of your body and this is why you've developed your mind. This is why you developed your brain. This is why you developed the computing of that which is that aspect of your physicality. It was not always like that. And so once you start feeling like your body is, that you're too much in your body and then your mind and thoughts were not as stimulating. In other words, you were oversaturated in your physical activity predominantly and then started looking for the ways to balance that out. And in getting excited to balance that out, you shifted that into the perspective of activating the mind, the intellect, to be specific, so much so more that you tipped it not towards the balance but to the other side of the equation. So you now quieting the mind is to get you back to the balance. But now you cannot unknow what you've known gener in terms of generations. In other words, you cannot forget because it's embodied in your DNA even that amount of how much physical work you would put where that would put you off the balance on the other side. And that's why we say evolution can only go forward. There is no movement back. It might feel back to you, it might feel like so many are saying, get back into your body, activate your body. You're not being physically active because of that. And now they're not saying because they want you to have bigger muscles or to the look specific way. They're trying to bring to you in their own way, this balance back. So your mind and your body get to be in that perspective of steadiness. And so it is not for everyone that the mind is oversaturated. There is so many that still have the body, but predominantly, especially in that which you call developed world, especially with the 
knowing of technology that it's an excellent tool to show you exactly that which is oversaturation of one of the aspects of your physicality and so when you get to see that's why we often say when you feel overwhelmed in your thought you go and get into the body you get into the exercise you do anything to soft and balance things out and then observe the quietness of your mind too this is why anyone who has experience the transformation and found this balance in this way would tell you that it's inevitable for you to to balance out your physical and activate physical energies first so your mind can say off i go to relax because different aspect of this beautiful vessel is taking over for the balance for a moment and then you meet yourself in that point where your body is your mind is no more active than your body and you find yourself in this wonderful space where you can be in a position not to be thinking your thoughts but rather to observe them and like on so many of your applications on your phone nowadays swipe left or swipe right I'll I'll pay attention to you later I'll pay attention to you later and then get to the po point where not even swiping left and right is happening that even observing the thoughts you dispersed sufficiently where you can be in that moment of quietness where there is not much going on but just simply your presence it takes some practice to get there but this is a little bit about why is happening this way and why so many are coming through to tell you to quiet your mind they're not telling you to quiet your mind for any other reason but to sense the balance from which you can clearly see that there is not that many survival necessities for most of people including everyone who is on this call that need to be taken care of before you can start creating from your perspective of steady and deliberateness and not only compulsion really really excellent conversations for the start of this broadcast go ahead thank you so i'd love to continue a conversation that we were having on the last broadcast last month and i feel like now i'm having more pieces to add to this and um, there could be some clarification for me on it. So I guess at the foundation of this, um, what I'm allowing more in my life and what I'm desiring is just more money to come in. And in the conversation we were having on the last one, we were really talking about the clarity of your question and how the clarity of the question and the why you want something can often help you receive it more quickly and put you in that more softer, subtle state of allowing. And I started to well, before this. you get to that part, we want to clarify one thing for you. Your clarity of the question is in the what. In other words, you've been observing, choosing, observing, choosing, and you've got the clarity of what is it that you desire. You may be even having the feeling of a rush. When do you want to experience it? But that clarity of what you want is your question being asked at that time. And then if you ask yourself about why you might bring it to fruition in your physicality sooner because that stops bringing you back into observe and choose observe and choose measurement position so when you have the clarity of what is it that you desire as saying i want more money to flow through as you said we say you keep asking yourself why why or what is it that i want this money for where are you directing the clarity of knowing that you're having right now and asking why will really make that very clear to you for as when you get trapped into the what only we know it is the next step from not knowing what you want so you're not sure so there is some observation and there is some curiosity and wonder and maybe some discomfort and maybe some negative emotion around it but once you do get the clarity of what is it that you want there's really no much benefit from you keep repeating what is it that you want but rather asking yourself why is it that you want it and once that is clear you will 
also start seeing in order of the appearance, in other words, in order of the importance for you right now, what is it that you really want first, second, third, fourth? In other words, when you ask why, it gives you immediately through the sense of your feeling or emotion, exactly you see clearly what is the predominant thing that you want to be experiencing. In other words, what is that most active desire and also almost like a ma magical moment dis disperses, in other words, eliminates all of those desires you might be thinking they were yours, but they were never yours to begin with. Okay, this is good. So when I'm asking the why and I'm clear on that, I feel like there's this other ingredient that I'm missing and I think this is the piece that we're starting to bridge right now. And right that now. is the part where you release the why. Once the why is clear, you've done all the work necessary for you to experience that in reality. But if you found a way to move from I don't know what I want, in other words, you shifted yourself from negative emotion, you got yourself to the clarity of what is it that you want, you made even more important step that so, trips so many, why is it that you want this? Now it's time to let it all go because from this perspective, don't know what I want, know exactly what I want, clarity of the question, this is why I want it. Now it's time for you not only to see the image of what you want, not only the sense, the good feeling about what you want, but see it in physicality. And we say you cannot have a vision of what you want and that in physicality at the same time. You cannot be paying attention to desire and experience its manifestation in physicality at the same time. And that's why we say you release the clarity of the wanting and now we're adding another piece to it after you've clarified why is it that you want it. So imagine now I'm super clear. Let's even go as specific as I know how much I want to make this month. I know how much in the next three months. I know the whys and I feel good in all of that. So right now I'm understanding it's time to let that go. And I think the part of where I'm resisted a little bit to wanting to let it go is because there seems like you have to be clear and aligned with the desire you have, meaning you have to have little no resistance to it in order for it to come because I can be clear about the money I want, why I want it and feel good. But if I've had a momentum going and going, for example, of eh, energy, high energy, eh, high, it seems at some point I have to clear that up to receive what I've asked for. Your why, your why clears all of that up. When you, <laughs> when you have the why, it clears it all up. It puts things in a, such a clear order. It puts things in a, such a specific order and then you can start playing about these things. In other words, then you can start seeing how it shows. But the why is that bridge that has not been offered to you as much. And we really started bringing a big deal out of it, making a big deal out of it is because the moment you have the clarity of the why, that is that last thing that allows you to release your focus, to release trying to hold on, to release trying to control how you're going to get it and allow yourself to tip the point so you can then pay attention because the how it's happening is never led by you. You always follow that part of the dance. You have directed all of the other parts, but now you're in the process of following. So it's safe to say that you've been following along to get the clarity of the question. But once that's done, you've directed it into why you've released the why and now you're following to see the how and not trying to make the de big deal about every step that happens saying this is now the how this is this mythical message that I'm getting this is really meant to be in other words because when you start to measure while you are following while you want to follow to get to that which is your desire in physicality when you start measuring up you're trying to lead again and we say You've never wanted to be only a leader. It is really no fun to only try to hold on and try really to direct every single aspect of it. In other words, you releasing, you following 
is you seeing what you've been leading up until that point so you can get clarity when you receive that answer to see where else do you want to lead again. This is what is often described as a masculine and feminine. This is what is described as yin and yang. This is what we often talk about your focus and focus. In other words, it is time for you to be in a different role because you holding on to any kind of identity in other words, also being the leader. Well, I'm the creator of my reality, so I should be in charge of the how to. And we say you are by paying attention where it is. That's how far your influence goes when it comes to receiving in your physicality that which you've created in your thought first. Whoa, so that was huge. The following and leading, that, that is huge. So then I guess I'm wondering is, <laughs> How long do you need to spend on the why? Because I think the part of me is like... Not for too long. Back. Not for too long. But if you still sense that you're going back to what and to when okay. and to what and to when, you're better off being in why. In other words, your why will soften up the remaining parts of resistance about your what and when. And once you're not coming back to what and when, you can release why. You cannot release why if you're still going back to what and when and with whom, and especially if you're still trying to navigate into the house. So we like to say, observe, choose, observe, choose, and get the clarity of what, when, with whom, and where. And once you have that, you start bringing yourself into why, and then the other ones are taking already the form it's already happened and so because it's already happened you only want to soften your attention from there so you can look elsewhere and so your why is the bridge and once your why is the bridge once you see that you have bridged in other words you're not looking back you've passed sufficiently you're about the half point of that bridge that why is bringing you to that is the time to release it so you can go to the other side of that bridge, which is experiencing manifestation of that which is your desire. Whoa, so then I can really trust the process that if I feel very clear about my desire. By I'm you saying that you are so satisfied about your role in this, that you've played your role so perfectly that there is nothing really to trust. It is really a sure thing. There is nothing to trust because you've done the work. You've done your part. Now you sit and you watch the show. So then I, so the trusting really was, I did the clarity. I know the why. That is enough. There's not trying to build more of a momentum or trying to overcome past beliefs. It you, are, you are building the momentum by releasing your attention from remaining attention from first what and when. <laughs> and then from why as well. And that's what brings the momentum through, not you pushing anything else, adding more fire or any more tank, gas into the tank that's already full because you filled it up with your intention so long ago. Then I've done the work, that was it. And I think it was the releasing of the why because I feel like I was going in circles and I think that's The way you it. say it is, I've created it, I want to experience it. I've created it, I want to experience it. I've created it, I want to experience it. When you're trying to keep adding into your creation, we say you keep really massaging the question and sometimes that takes time. Predominantly that takes time. You keep massaging the question up until the moment you're receiving the answer. There is no gap between question and the answer ever. It is only your question keeps percolating until it's there. So when you feel like you're still going back to the what and the when and the who with whom and where and why and sometimes even how it is because your question is still percolating. When you feel satisfied with the question, the answer is seen and realized by you instantaneously. That's why we say that all of your experiences of manifestation are instant. It is just, is your question percolating? So when you next time you do not see what you want to see, you say, I'm still massaging the question. I'm still forming the question and I will let it be because I want to see how far it's there. In other words, you can say, I want to see 
and experience that which I've created. So I will sit back and follow the lead that I put in motion to begin with. Oh, that was it. Thank you so much. That was awesome. That was an excellent, excellent conversation. Go ahead. We're ready for more. Hi, Leola. That was so good. Um, I got a lot of clarity on that from myself as well. Thank you. Um, I have been wanting to ask you, like, so I know that I, my vibration attracts everything in my life. I know that. And I know that nothing is being asserted. Nothing's coming in by mistake. And I love your coffee mug, side note. And I was curious about, like, as I continue to fine tune and clean up what feels like cleaning up my vibration, I often seem to get people from my, we'll say, quote unquote, past, like past relationships, past friends, past, just people that were once in my life, now no longer in my life actively. They seem to reemerge seemingly out of nowhere. And I, I think to myself, well, now, I know I haven't been thinking about them. I know there wasn't even anything that reminded me of them, but here they are. It's either in a dream or it's a phone call or it's a message or it's a mysterious package in the mail. And you are working so, so hard to get rid of them because you're cleaning up your vibration. And we say, why are you, why are you cleaning it to begin with? Because there is no the static part where you're going to get to. In other words, when what you called cleaning up your vibration, we call more inclusivity. And in more inclusivity, you're aware of all of the vibrations that are there. You're aware of all of the frequencies and you're not afraid of any of them because you know that you have the clarity and you know that you have the tools to choose how long you will stay in each and every one of them. And so this inclusivity that happens does not make for a difference between this frequency and that frequency because it does not matter to you. None of that is bringing you to any other perspective but the one that you choose to experience predominantly. Yes, beautiful. And I realize more and more that it's the inclusivity where I'm, where I'm just more ready to just accept all of those reflections, all of those angles. And, and so we want to just make that slight little okay. difference for you to say that you're not cleaning up your vibration, but you're expanding that which is your vibration. You're being more inclusive. You're being inclusive of others. And some of them may throw you off and show you that you might not be ready or not as inclusive as you want to be. You want to be ultimately exclusive it is in your nature. That's why you feel sometimes a tug of war because in your boundless nature, from your unique perspective, there is always a boundary that you can release and a fuller and fuller experience of inclusivity that can be your everyday occurrence. Yes, oh my gosh, that feels so much better. And so then I know that a lot of times people will say, or even I'm, I'm also one of these that will think that, well, if someone reappears from the past. Is there something for me to learn? Is there something for me to look at that I missed before? And I'm, I'm, th I'm feeling like maybe it's more simple than that. And maybe it's just that. And we say, yes, 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 yes. At every given point, everything you give attention to from the past, your image that you're receiving about the future, your now observation, always reflection of you, always valuable to you. So in that sense, you're saying, is there anything for me to learn? We rather like to say, is there anything for me to check in with? In other words, is there anything for me that's reflecting to me right now that's valuable? And we say it's always, always valuable. You see, you saying sometimes, is there anything for me to learn? can imply a little bit as, is there anything for me that I have now that I'm about to remember or form an opinion about or form the expectation about? In other words, it's way simpler than that. You're right, because it is just a momentarily reflection of telling you how inclusive you are. If it throws the negative emotion within you, well, then you are at that moment triggered by it. So you go, put the head in the sand, get to steady and see when is the next time you can include it. No big deal. But 
usually you get to that perspective sooner when you're not looking to learn from these experiences and then form that thought pattern or opinion that it's now going to serve you better because we can promise you no opinions, beliefs or expectations are serving you longer than for about a moment. Yeah, yeah, that feels accurate. That feels really accurate to me. Um, so it feels fun that people we've known will just kind of re resurface to show us maybe a new version of us, of where we're at. They will show you how fluid you are in your movement of a question, answer, dance. And is it triggering within you opinions and beliefs and judgments about memory that you have from the time when you were interacting? Or are you seeing this from a completely different perspective right now? It can give you such powerful reflections and especially those that you have not seen in the longest time. Costa would sometimes have a dream about a person from an elementary school that he had not talked ever since and never really even wants to go and talk to them. And so, but he could see this as a reflection back. Sometimes those dreams might be similar or a thought that comes in may be similar. Sometimes it's in a specific place in the neighborhood he grew up in. In other words, you do not have to physically even engage with, with these people or them to show up with you, but it's no surprise when they do, whether you had a thought about them before or not, because at all times you're having relationship with everything you've ever given attention to. Even for just a moment, there is a memory about that, whether you're aware of it or not. And so all of it, always a springboard for more satisfying ride as you continue evolving eternally. Mm, yeah, so is it fair to say that, that those types of reflections are more valuable than maybe just a new strength? There is no is difference it? between that. Okay. You yeah. are yeah. really looking to create this hierarchy and we know that it's your natural stance based off of the focus. There is certain amount of that that you need to keep for you to be physically focused. But we say once your basic necessities are taken care of and you're in no danger, then less is more when it comes to your measurement because then you open up the valve, the pipeline for so much more of your desires to flow into your experience. Less is more. I love that. Okay. Great. That's feeling really good. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Tova, unmute yourself. Hi. You see me? I don't know. Go ahead. We hear you. Okay. Hi. Um, wonderful discussion, especially with Patrick. I love that discussion. And I am um, reminded of a seminar that Abraham did in Australia once when a guy was talking to her and he was so down about himself and his life. She asked him what he did. He said he was a carpenter. And she said, are you a good carpenter? And he said, no. And she said, by the end of this conversation, you're going to be a good carpenter. And that's one of the only times that I've heard Abraham talk to someone that has a blockage and tell them that the conversation is going to unblock it. So that's what I'm asking for here because I'm a manifester. I'm powerful. I know um, what I've create, created in my life and what more I can create, except in the area of relationship. And in the area of relationship, I have been wanting a relationship for so long and I have been so clear what I want. I have written so many pages about why and I've been looking for the signals and nothing comes into my life that interests me. I haven't. So we would like to hear, to... we would like to hear some of these things that you have put as a list of desirable things in your life partner. Desirable things in a relationship. In other words, you say you're so clear about what do you want in a partner yes. and you also are so clear why is it that you want that in your partner and we want to hear yes. all of those things. Okay, well, what I want in a partner is a very loving, transformed person who is very committed to the world, who's very um, 
equivalently bright and successful as I am and that's doing something in the world that's making a difference in some way, whatever his way is, somebody who loves life, who can share with me the spiritual life, the life of traveling the world, the life of making a difference with people. And what I wanted is I want to share my life. I want to love and be loved. And I have so much love to give. I am all love. And yet it seems to stop in that direction because I never meet somebody that I really feel is a partner for me. And I so many, what many, we many want years. to bring to your attention right now is that you've wrote only one side of this person. In other words, you, what you're talking about, I want a partner that's going to be reflect back to me only positive things. Someone who is going to reflect back to me only that aspect that I can accept because, because at this moment I have the tools to get to steady. I know how to take care of me and my own business. But every time I see something negative in some of them reflecting back to me is that I might be discouraged that this person is not meeting any of these criteria and we say if you really wanted to have a life partner that would have all of those things in other words we'll use the word vibrationally the way that you've described it in other words someone who is going to re keep reflecting back to you positive and positive and positive and positive you would be satisfied by having a pet. You would be satisfied by just having a wonderful companion who is always going to reflect back to you that which is love. For as when you put into it, we'll bring that back to you. But what we want to bring to your attention is that a life partner is so much more than that. A life partner has equal amount of that which you've described as much as the nagging part, as much as the stimulating part, as much as the annoying part, as much as the raising questions part, as much as being not in the mood part, as much as not taking care of themselves at some point. In other words, when you are saying, I want only positive reflections, you open yourself up for the next layer of the evolution. But we want to bring to your attention is that you've done that part already. You see enough positive reflections coming back to you. And the reason why you do not see that particular person just yet is because by this point, and we'll have that conversation that will nudge you in that direction more, will allow you to use this opportunity for as big of a shift as you want to do. It is always up to you, but we'll bring to your attention that you were aware that you were self and that others are self, that everyone has access to everything that exists, wider perspective, divine perspective within them. And now you started seeing some reflections back to you. And when you start accepting positive reflections of you as you being clean in your vibration, as the friend was saying, that is the first step of you seeing more inclusive perspective of you. But when you start being ready to see negative reflections also as a part of you, and when you get to the perspective where you do not measure which one is more valuable to you, positive reflection or negative reflection, but you take it as a face value as it's all you coming back as a reflection to you, well then at some point, you see equal value in both and you can cease even an experience that others are just you from a different angle. And so we know this might sound far-fetched to you, but you are on the way to experience that and you're knocking at the door and we say when you want to have a partner, as you want to have a friend or a family member, it is not only the like-minded part that is really exciting to you in that which is a relationship. It might be if your previous experiences were not predominantly that, but we want to assure you that you, specifically you, have found so much steadiness and you have so many tools to get yourself to happy and to light and steady that it's okay for you to start looking for a little bit of trouble. Looking for a little bit of trouble, not fearing that someone will throw you off from that which is your steadiness or often referred as the alignment 
but that if that happens you will just cover that mirror for a moment get yourself to steady and go and interact at all times Armand and Costa are for so many look as an example of this couple that never argues that they're on the same page that they're reflecting only positive back to each other and we say you want to be in on some of their conversations behind the cameras and lights when they're on or when you meet them in person too if you're surrounded by them you would know that there is so much more to that dynamic than only positive reflections right back and they're far from being the only ones in this way but when they at some point realized that everyone is in charge of their own steadiness they stopped judging the positive reflections as the only valuable experience in their loving relationship and so we can sense that you are ready to start putting some of those troublesome things on that list as well whatever you're ready to include for as the stimulation of that which is going to launch so many more questions within you comes as a part of having a life partner thank you i'm not in touch with that negative that it's negative things and people that i'm scared of once i'm in a relationship that i want to be with somebody i'm there to work and i'm inclusive and so we I'm say the next step at relationship what and we say you get ahead of that because if that was to be the case this relationship would already be there so you know exactly what is it that you want but we say go back to the drawing board of that what and include from the perspective of steady you write it down in an equal value here are all the positive aspects of this person and here are the nagging not so positive that I'm willing to include in this particular person we're not saying say I can include any negative stuff we're not saying include somebody who will be not respectful and abusive and negative in that sense but we say look for the other side that will stimulate more of that positivity that's already crystal clear there is not far from the moment where you can see that crystal clear and once you see this whole mix inclusivity of an actual person that is going to be ready to do that the glimpses of it will start showing up and you would start first chuckling then laughing in within saying how clear you are to see now the signs of the road that have already been there and then how so many of wonderful people you've been coming in touch with along the way could have qualified if you were to be ready to include the other side of them too but all of that is really irrelevant because that person who is in the same process as you are will be there as a match once you start being a little bit more inclusive in your experience let me ask you that since you're looking in a place where i am blind what would you suggest i would include in the list that i'm not including what do you say well let's say how much of the nagging do you want to are you willing to include how much of someone questioning every little thing that you do how mu how much of somebody not understanding you are you ready to include how much of the different opinions are you ready to include how much of of nagging opposite opinions and beliefs and judgments you're ready to include because this is part of it too you see from this wider perspective there is no difference to you and anyone else but in your specific position of your specific physical focusing mechanism there is different vantage point not even you have the same thoughts and opinions and judgment at this moment and the next moment little less that you can expect that from someone else so you saying that you want to have someone who describes and who reflects back to you none of that would be really someone who is so unconditional that does not have many preferences on their own and we say you figure that part out already you are looking now to stir up the pot and stimulate and be more inclusive so you can find new layers and resonance resonance in your own study 
Sure, I love what you're saying. When I look at Armand and Costa, I'm sure that they have a lot of things they have to include in the relationship. And I, the commitment that I see is the basis of their relationship. They can work out anything. But they, they are excited to be looking for things to work out because the things that are being worked out is this wonderful, not just for them, but this wonderful experience of having a different angle that can be considered to pull you into more inclusivity. And yeah. so different angle, more inclusivity, different angle, more inclusivity. You want somebody who is looking to find steadiness and has the tool to find the steadiness and can say, I need five minutes when I'm overwhelmed. Or you can say to this person, I need few minutes when you're overwhelmed. But to look for someone who will never bring you the experience of that would mean that you are ready not to have any question asked, questions asked anymore. And that would mean that you're ready to switch perspective and transition into a new perspective. And that's so far from what we're sensing from you. Yeah, I think I'm very open to working on things, but I need to have that initial um, in commonness enough, enough on the same level, enough on the same development, enough on the same vibration. And so we say, and so we say, and so we say, you might be feeling somebody is including from the perspective of not so steady to steady, but we say, if you said here they are in this clump of not being there and here I am in this positive clump we say it's equally the same because everyone is in the clump so when you open up and invite more and this other person opens up and invite more you'll be able to get more of that and then you're not measuring who is where on the frequency or on, or on the vibration because you find it all equally valuable and stimulating for your physical experience really there has really to be the initial initial sharing of enough that you want to be together and i don't attract i haven't attracted for a long time years ago i did attract some men that were very great partners for me and they were always unavailable or they were my boss and in the last years there hasn't been anyone that i wanted to be with once i'm with someone i'm open to having things to work out I know what and we say in order for you to include that one you go back to your list and see what you're ready to include from the nagging side of them it will not okay. take you that long really really excellent conversation all right. all right I will trust that thank you so much wonderful being with you thank you go ahead thanks very much thank you I wish I didn't appreciate that conversation as much as I do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I thought I would take this opportunity to ask about kind of a loose, loose term magic. Somebody needs to be on mute so we can hear you clearly. Go ahead. Thank you, Tova. Yeah. If you, if you can mute, that's great. And so I want to take this opportunity to address the term that might be best loosely known as magic and just sort of from this call thinking of a few examples like I think there might be magic in the galactic center in the horizon line in that space and time between sleep and awake and like that floating otherworldly feeling in a partner dance when when things are not your own it's bigger than you and I just thought I'd ask you about what you think about you know a different term or the term magic and, and where you might see that here for us on earth well you're talking about these experiences that are rare in the nature and we say so many more of the moments can feel like that to you in other words you that magical moment of a nagging person turning into a life partner that nagging moment of somebody having a different opinion that allows you to create the preference that magical moment of so much energy coming in from your asking in other words we understand that all of these magical moments that you are used to categorizing as magicals are the ones of positive reflections and these things that are bigger and out of the scope bigger than you you even use the words and we say once you find 
the awareness about the creation process and that the gap is always closing up from that which is the desire into you seeing it but not closing up to become smaller but you bringing your inclusiveness more so you can include the physical representation of that in your physicality well then you see that more you focus on the bigness of the magic more you focus on the gap to experience magical moments more you delay the experience of so many we often like to say you do not see so many gift boxes along the way that you can open while you're waiting for that big magical moment to happen and so you taking a breath every breath is the magic your focusing mechanism bringing to you such an experience where very little of you need to be aware of not even of your breathing in other words your wonderful vessel giving you this this wonderful technology to use not only to experience the physicality through your senses but other dimensions of life too all of it is not only magic but miracle we use the words in each and every of meditative appreciations that are in one of the programs one of them shared openly with everyone too and there is this one part that we wanted to remind you of so much every time you hear either of these appreciations and that's that you are a miracle and you are the awareness and so when you are aware that you're a miracle and you're the awareness then you're really loving that you're alive and then so many of those moments feel like magic and feel like miracle to you for as every moment is a miracle on its own because with each moment that passes by you are so different we see it's safe to say you're really reborn so speaking of magic that each moment you're reborn but can still navigate through the timelines creating contexts formulating opinions and beliefs that give you continuity so you can have more reflections so you can expand and feel more of your eternal movement while in a specific juxtaposition at that particular moment we would call that magic and miracle and steroids thanks i appreciate a, a quote from einstein that and i truly believe it that you can either look at life as if nothing is a miracle or everything is a miracle and i definitely espouse that and i pick up lots of gift boxes and i appreciate it i guess just and we would say if we would say that special. it's not only one side or the other side we would say that you can see everything or nothing or anything in between because everyone is at a different stage of their own evolution so true thanks so much really excellent really excellent conversation go ahead well hello everybody and hello Viola and thank you so much for this wonderful conversation everybody I'm sure you all feel the same but I feel this is all for me tonight <laughs> so I want to bring it a little back to personal as a previous friend a couple uh, people before was talking about the situation when you get when you feel that reflection is positive and positive and you're ready to let in some what we call negative i don't really like those words either but let's say different energy it, it feels to me that it happened to me a few years ago and when i let that reflection into me some really ugly things came up and i've created really serious situations for me which now i find myself still recovering from and what i want to chew on is a little bit of understanding and I know I know I know <laughs> but there is always that feeling that comes up that I don't know where it's coming from somewhere in my body I either disconnected my mind so much that my mind just keeps going but my body starts feeling scared or stressful about the consequences of the events that happened in my life so 
So we will bring to you exactly what this is. This consequence that you were feeling were not about fear if this is going to happen again. Is it, are you again going to try to eliminate all the questions? We're not saying that this experience was happy. We're not saying that you were supposed to be experiencing anything, but you were experiencing more and more and more struggle because you were holding on, holding on, holding on stronger and stronger and stronger in trying to eliminate all of the questions. And we say, sometimes you need to do that. When you cannot release it and look other way, sometimes you need to leave the relationship. You need to leave that stubborn mirror that it's causing you, even physical harm or the fear about you staying in your physical focus in this iteration the way that you are. But from this distance, you can see that this experience got to that point because you were trying to eliminate all of the questions. And even though rightfully so at that moment, you're not looking to do that anymore. In other words, just the fact that you're not in that kind of relationship anymore has shifted you in a direction where you can have more, more of the reins of your creation in your own hands. And you say, well, I moved to this space, to this clump of feeling better. I've isolated myself with more head in the sand so I can heal, so I can not go back into that place. And now I'm looking for some stimulation. I want more conversations to come up. I want more of that movement to be felt, but I'm afraid to open the door. I'm afraid to open the gates wide open because I do not want to go back and be triggered by it. And we say that can never happen again in that amount because now you know how to put the head in the sand and so you want to start opening the door uncovering that mirror little by little and when you do that you say i know that i'm gonna go explore some more now i know i'm going to go and find something stimulating that is going to make me cause the questions but i will do that from perspective of steady i will do that when i feel good I will do that when I feel charged up. I will do that when I've already meditated. I will do that when I'm really feeling on my high. And then I will say, this feels good. I have found my own steady right now. What little bit of a trouble can I look into to stimulate so I can go back and again feel so much more of that steadiness? What is the question that I can find here? And when you are the one opening the door deliberately on purpose, for a little bit of trouble, we say trouble, not the trouble you were talking about. We're talking about variety observation, curiosity, wonder, some questions that will arise on their own. But when you are the one opening the door, you are controlling the timing. And because you are the one controlling the timing, you can choose how long you stay in there. And therefore, there is really no way that you can come back to the same things that are triggering you so much because now you're not trying to be stay away from it now you're the one inviting the questions and so when you see a little bit of practice based off of the process we've just offered you you are so easy about it and satisfied about it knowing that there is no speed you need to take and there is no this momentum that you need to find and clear all of this up immediately but you can play hide and seek game with that which is this stubborn mirror that has brought you so much value that you've been experiencing all of these years already. Agree, agree. How do I get my sense of freedom? I felt a bit trapped by my emotions for so long. I really want to <laughs> get rid of that feeling. Of well, you do not want to get rid of the questions. You do not want to get rid of thoughts. You do not want to get rid of the emotions. Only what you want to do is to see that you don't have to identify with them. In other words, we want to remind you that you are not a thinking mechanism hooking up to divine source, God, everything that exists perspective. It is other way around. You are this wider perspective embodied that has a body as a vessel, as a tool I, to experience. I know what I feel it. Mind that is really bringing you that same thing. Emotions are the tool. Thoughts are the tool. 
Beliefs and opinions and judgments are the tool that come from thought being repeated and formed a dent that you keep thinking. So what we want to bring to your attention is, is not that you want to get rid of all of the emotions you want to get rid of, you want to soften up and detach from you identifying yourself as a specific emotion. And we say when you're ready to do that, not only with negative emotion, but with the positive emotion too, then you can dance not with no, but beyond emotions because you can see all equal value in all of them and therefore choose where you want to stay how long. Can you offer me um, a thinking process on that? Well, we want to discourage any thinking process about this. That's why we're saying what we're saying is because you, you see how you want to identify yourself with something. You want to find a thought process. You want to find something. You want to change this, this way of thought coming through for this way of thought coming yes. through. And we say, you not, do not want to exchange one funnel for another. You want to be the one plugging in and out all of the thought process and, and patterns as you choose and as you please. We want you to see that. We want you to know that you are doing that at all times, but that you are sometimes keep plugging into the same thing. And we say, get yourself to the softer perspective. So this is what you do. You get to the state of ease and appreciation. Do you have the tool that gets you to steady? Yes. Do you, do you have the moments where you feel at ease, yes. where you're not directing your thoughts to anything in particular? Well, when you get to that state, we say you stay there and you linger for a moment. You feel the goodness, you feel the ease, you feel relaxation, you feel satisfaction. But then you say, I know that now from this wider perspective, from this soft perspective where my thoughts are not as active, I get to choose where I plug in the next thought pattern, the next thought process, the next thought that's going to cause me to have a feeling and do this over and over and over and over again. But I'm the one that will open the door for the new thoughts to come through. What is it that I can give an attention in a very soft, directed way so I have the evidence that I am the one doing it? Once you're the one doing it first time and the second time and the third time, then all of these feelings of stuckness in any thought or the emotion will start crumbling down because you will have the evidence that you are the one doing it. Yeah. And so, I really can feel it. And we say you allow yourself to do something meaningless after your meditation, something soft. You wash dishes, you organize something, you direct your thought in exactly where you want it, into action that you want it. And once you see that and you recognize that while you're doing it, well, now you're in a position to not only experience the shift you've just felt moments ago, but to make that your newest, most fun game of all time. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thanks. Really, really brilliant conversations today. Go ahead. We'll take a few more questions. Hey, Leola. So I would love for you to um, look at something I experienced recently in, I'm always interested in the blending. I like the last question that was just asked. Um, I think it's a little bit related. Um, it's, I had a cool, and I'm, I'm playing around with this, um, and for some reason, staring in the mirror, staring in the mirror is how I'm able to hit this, I would call it an entry point. Where, where are I'm, you staring <laughs> while you're staring at the mirror? Um, it seems like a, I like the focal point, for starters. But so what is your focal point? The task of looking my eyes. 
Well, that's what we wanted Myself. to hear because the only uh, the only the mirror. only benefit from you staring at the mirror is if you can for a moment look and see how long you can keep that stare that look for a certain amount of time and for how long you can do it without being judged judging about anything so that else. Was really fun. That was really fun. Um, it, it almost had like a swimming feeling, like I was swimming to the surface kind of feeling where um, I would stare and then a thought would come and it feel like I've got seaweed on me and I'd swim through it a little bit and just keep redirecting my attention back to that singular focus. And it almost had a, it had a visceral feeling at some point of like an opening, like almost like just a broader sense of self looking through a window uh, kind of feeling and I felt um, what I'm assuming is just a broader awareness shifting into a broader awareness well what you are experiencing what you're experiencing there is there were no distractions there was only you present in that moment you got focused and then you could unfocus from that perspective because there was no distractions you can at that perspective be one with everything that exists in a heartbeat it felt um it had a very loving feel to it and almost like a declarate i just you know, i'm right here that's the best way i can interpret it is this like i've been here all along it was some form of introducing myself to myself in a, in a new way um and i thought this would be a great time to talk about that and what thoughts would you or what would you even offer me to consider um looking back on that experience for you to see that that's the moment where you can say here now present in this moment in every moment at all times me wider perspective embodied in other words you were aware without distractions of who you are for the moment and you are in that perspective and you're not looking to be in that perspective at all times because you like to dance between focus and unfocus but when you get to that perspective even few times throughout the day that charges you up so you can go and apply that into you giving attention outwards and when you start applying it like that and when you're consistent with that experience you get to see so much more of desired outcomes in your experience and not being thrown off when those out outcomes are not there it almost it almost feels like I don't know. It, it, there's a there's a sense of presence, but also like a disidentification. Like none of this stuff stuff is real kind of feeling, and it makes me think. It, it makes me think it's so much easier to be present and sit at attention with whatever's unfolding if you're just you're just not bought in on all the narratives in your head. And well, what you're describing is you being in like a position, that. what you're describing is you being in a position where you created a little bit of a distance from that which is your focused outward perspective. And so you say, this is who I really am and here are my application of that in my physicality. And so I'm not fully, I'm not the body, this is my body, I'm not the mind, this is my mind. I'm not the thought, this is my thought. I'm not the emotion, this is my emotion. In other words, you start seeing who is who in a creation process. And so you can, you can see that so clearly that then really the fun starts and you starting to play about that and you having a little bit of this distance, not to detach yourself from anything, not to say, well, this physicality is not real, because I can now see clearly who I am, but to see I'm clearly who I am and I'm clearly in this position of wonderful integration. So let's play because now there is really no reason for me to be doubting anything. And that's why you share this with everybody, with us, 
that you had a feeling I'm here, I've arrived, I'm here, I've arrived, I'm here, I'm, I've arrived, I've arrived to the position where I can see things clearly so I can choose how often I get to this position and from this position to direct myself into that which is physical expression of this. This is what many would call you've assumed the position of your inner self, of your inner being, of your inner guidance, you assume the position of your divinity in that moment and that can fuel you up now for anything and everything you're giving your attention to for as long until it's time for you to recheck in. This is why we say it used to be sufficient for you to do this once a day and to get to this, this position, quieting your mind, balancing yourself for the moment. But now it's really more like minimum one to two, especially if you're nurturing so many others and have an intention to nurture others and to broadcast this to others too, whether through your example or through any kind of practice. We say the movement and the asking and the numbers of people who are really focusing mechanisms keeps growing and the speed grows as well. And so you checking in with you is required to be not longer, but more consistent. In other words, spaced out, but still consistent. Your pillars of steadiness are there to be a little bit more consistent and spread out to allow you to then fully dive in into that which is your blended integrated perspective. The resultant effect since playing around with this puts me in the same vibrational like posture of the juxtaposition of being a, an author writing a really compelling story, feeling the twists and turns of the plot and the characters, but I still know I'm not the characters or or that they're mine they're mine I'm not I haven't forgotten I'm the author um, and that feels really really good and thank you so much there is nothing more empowering for you to see that you have always been but now no with no doubt are the one holding the reins of your own creation really really excellent conversation Go ahead. We'll wow, take. this call has just been so powerful. It's like it's answered so, so many things. It's almost like I should probably put my hand down because I think everything's gotten answered. Um, so I wanted to uh, get some insight. So I'm in a place where I'm ready to create something that I feel very aligned with. And uh, one of the things that I'm very excited about is it actually gives me mobility, which is something that I've always wanted to be like, you know, whatever I created, I'd be able to do it anywhere. So I'm having these visions of living in the city for so long that I love, but I'm like, I think I'm ready to move. I'm ready to get out of here. And so my question is, you know, there's sort of this whole balance of, you know, being present and really enjoying the, the moment, yet creating what I want in the future. And so my question is, I can kind of already see that I'm going to be somewhere else, say in six months. Um, what is the process for me to draw myself to that? Or is that creating more limitation? in creation by actually already putting something out there and saying okay i'm going to look at it from six months from now and draw myself towards that picture or is that am i limiting myself by being so specific about how that should occur well do you have the resonance of how this is going to happen over the next six months uh, could you repeat that do you have the resonance do you have the clarity of each step of how you're gonna get there in six months no i just and so I what we are there. saying is you've got the clarity of what you know yeah. exactly why and now there is nothing else for you to draw the how part is you going into the following seat in other words you led all of these things now you want to follow so you can see it and not skip the beat of what you've created already because if you now try to draw and project and manufacture all of these other things, you are now saying, I continue to lead. And we say, you can continue to lead, but only to continue getting more clarity and more clarity and more clarity and more clarity 
and more clarity and in getting the more clarity you're missing opportunity to see about this step and this step and this step and this step in other words that which you call do I need to draw it we say you have already done it the path is already drawn there is infinite paths of how you can receive this within the next six months now if you're making a specific big deal about this you can to be even more specific to make it but then you're coming back to the question to the question to the question and so you're clarifying it well you will inevitably continue to do that but we you seeing this in six months you stand better chance in seeing it by being in a following role of observing and ses sensing and listening instead of trying to project and direct because directing part of this has happened now it's time for you to experience it and you cannot do both at the same time mm, that's beautiful because that was really where i was kind of creating from is just like this is where i see myself in six months and i just have left left it and said okay i put it out there and now i'm just going to follow the journey that takes me there and it might not be well let's way. be even more specific i'm going to follow the journey that i set in motion not the journey that takes me there i'm going to watch all of these next steps but i'm not going to measure how far i am from each of these things i'm going to follow the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step and when this moment happens six months from now i will realize it without trying to draw anything and in retrospect i'll be able to see what i drew that time when i was setting the intention and so you always see all of your steps in retrospect when you're trying to project them you have moment of, of stop and go, stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. And we say you don't have to have that experience. You can have a wonderful smooth ride along the way. Not really, not having that which is the clarity, not really. We're not saying do not continue making preferences. But what we are saying is you make the preferences from a perspective of observing and listening and following and not trying to instigate all of that because you've already done that part fantastic that's exactly what i needed to know i appreciate it so much really 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 excellent conversation we'll, we'll take one more short question go ahead hi um my life is going really well. I'm feeling very steady, but there's one place where I'm wobbling. Well, I'm here it is. We want to bring to your attention this little pretending game that you're playing. In other words, you say, my life is going wonderful, but here is the thing. And we say, in the moment when you're not aware of that one thing, you are steady. In the moment when you look at that thing, you're not steady. And so it is okay for you to acknowledge that first, before we can see how you can slurp even that particular topic into your steadiness too. In other words, how you can get not to be so triggered by, by, about, about it so you can say that you're really steady. Okay, so the, the particulars are, I'm, I have, well, a total of eight cruises this year planned, five retreats, um, three wheel of events, and I want to do all those things. I'm feeling drawn to do all those things. But I'm also feeling like every time I come home, I want to spend time at home. And I'm not getting as much time as I want at home. And I, I don't know what, like, part of me is like, well, maybe next year I should just stay home and not do all these things. And I don't know why I'm feeling like, it's too much even though I want when I look at each individual specific thing I really want to do all of them. well what you're really talking about is here are all of these wonderful experiences they're all uplifting in nature they get me to feel more steadiness to experience more movement but my integration time in between is not as sufficient and we say you would not be asking for all of these experiences if you were not wanting to discover about your speed of integrating it too and so we're not saying that this is the only measurement of how quickly you move and how steady you are in movement but it is one of them you wanted to stretch 
your experience not only of catching up with your expansion but also integrating it into your experience and at some point you really got to be so satisfied about that experience so clear about it that you want more and you want more and you want more and you want more and now you're asking yourself can I go ahead and integrate all of this in this experience and we say you can have it all you can be moving at all times coming back home you can have the experience of not having any of the homes and everywhere being your home you can find this balance and that balance but we want to bring to your attention that this is in the essence of the question that you are asking how much can I put in my schedule to bring the awareness to bring the steadiness to raise the questions to get my desires and how much I can put it in use on my own when I'm not stimulated by those conducive environments So how much can I do it when I'm at home and stay stay steady? And so the question is, you went for a cruise or you went for a retreat and you came home. And so how does it feel to be back home? Like I have more here that I should be doing and not going and doing all these fun things. And so, and so is this, do you feel like you're dreading to go to the next trip and to the next trip? No, I want to go. And so, and so why do you feel like you didn't have enough time to put the roots or to discharge or to integrate wonderful experiences to catch a breath for more? Do you feel like this experiences of being briefly at home is you running away from something? No, I don't think so. I think me being at home is, it's a new house and I like, I want to put in a garden and I want to build a raised garden bed and I'm looking at everything I have to do and the time I have to do it in and I have friends coming for visits for, you know, weeks at a time and I'm just looking at wanting to do the gardening and then well, is you're saying now wanting and having and having a time time stamp and timeline. What is the time step and the timeline on this work? Um, I don't know. I've never built a raised garden bed, so I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't think it's going to be hard. I've drawn out the plans and the materials list, and I've watched videos on how to do it. I, I think I know what I'm doing. Um, and so... <laughs> So what would happen if you start before one trip and continue after another trip and finish it after the third trip? And what would be if you were to discover these things at different times because something else is calling you? And what would it be when if you and when you start doing some of these things you get excited and you maybe change some of your plans? All of these options are fine. In other words, it is not like you're caught between the rock and the hard place it is that you have so many wonderful stimulating things to do but now you're introducing some timelines and you're introducing some standards and you're introducing some expectations that have nothing to do with the ease of you coming in and out of from home and I'm so putting, that I, I'm putting deadlines on it and I don't need to that's it that's exactly it thank you so much okay we love when we sometimes bring and talk about apples and pears and you get clarity on oranges. It is the favorite experience of you getting this energy exchange that often has, but predominantly has nothing to do with the words being spoken. This has been a wonderful, wonderful gathering of the new speed that you've been bringing to so many of these different questions. We know that things are shifting, more and more coming through. We know that some of the questions might have not been answered just yet, which means they're bound to be percolating some more before you have an opportunity in a format like this or some other way to receive the answer or to formulate it as a question too. Everything at all times is in that which is divine timing. And when you get to the perspective of steady, 
with a little bit of that distance we talked about, you get to choose that timing too. Whether it is the manifestation, whether it is the new project, or whether it is the receiving of wonderful new idea that will really stimulate you to be listening and paying attention about this and this and this step of the how. This has been the most satisfying broadcast we've done to date and in eagerness for more, in appreciation for all of your questions and so many more that are hatching while you're receiving the answers too, for now, that's it. Woo! Oh my goodness, Amihi! Okay, mi vida, are you coming? Are you coming? Don't leave just yet. Hang out. Let's talk. <laughs> oh my goodness, wait a second. Let me see. Yes. Mi vida, hola. I'm coming. Hola, hola. Hello. Hello, yeah. hi everybody. We're gonna try to pull up the gallery to see. Ooh, so many peeps. Oh my gosh, Tovachka is here too. Hi, look at you with your sombrero. Hello, this, where do you look? look? Here or here? here? You're looking here, but, but when I you like wanna to... look at... No, when you look at people, you look there. Maybe that. No, but I like to... You're sitting on my... <laughs> well, whatever. Zip it. I'm not naked, I promise. I saw the cup in a in a home I saw him in a, in a, in a, in a, several times. Wait, I saw the cup. Look there. I'm looking there. Stop pushing me. But this is small. I know, but you're tiny. So I, I saw this cup at Home Home Goods, right? We're Home Goods, and it was saying something like, "I promise, I'm I'm not I'm not naked from the waist below." And I was like, "That would be a good." Good cup to have. By the way, a little promo. This cup is made by Lindsay Cooper. She is the designer. And look at this, it's so amazing. So, Lindsay This Cina. segment has been sponsored by Lindsay, Lindsay Cooper. Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she made, she, could, she couldn't make up her mind. She made one Costa and Armand, and we have one that says Armand Costa, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, anyways, okay. so anyways, nice everybody. To see you. We're not gonna bore you with a lot of. Uh, no, wait. I want to. I want to say something. Wait, okay. La, 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 la. I want to say something about relationships. So it's. Oh, here we go, guys. Really, I'm telling you because I'm experiencing that. Not always Costa is a question. Oh, screaming. Because I'm excited. Why are you judging me? That's what I'm saying, you know. It doesn't mean that your relationship has to be not satisfying. It can be very satisfying, you know, and very expansive when, uh, you know, there is someone that poke you a little bit lovingly, you know, and puck, 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 puck. Uh, because there is uh, expansion in that. If you have someone that only brings you answers, imagine, it would be like, oh, whatever, I don't care, you know, it's so vibrationally high and so positive. Okay, anyways. Anyways, I wanted to see if any of the new friends or people who we see monthly and not on our Difference Makers calls if you guys have any questions or any curiosities or anything you want to know, <laughs> Mivita, please, get serious now. Now, it, now will be the time for you to guys to, to, um, to do that. Do you, Mivita, please. Uh, you don't have to raise the hand. You can just go unmute yourself and ask the question or something you want to say. Just go ahead. Mivita, please. Just go ahead. Anybody wants to chat? Anybody? Wants to ask? Yeah. Don't be shy. Go ahead. When I said, Armand looks at you like that. What did you say? What? I said, what's it feel like when Armand looks at you like that? Oh, yeah. You should ask him, what does it feel when I look at him like that <laughs> all the time? <laughs> and especially like, what does it feel when I want to hug him or anything? And he's like, no, it's time to sleep. No. Okay, guys. Don't. don't no, he comes up, sometimes says, no, That's I'm a not great receiving example. any kisses. That's a great example. Like, really? So, sometimes I'm so focused 
uh, on work and I'm pretending I'm enjoying it that when he comes to kiss me I'm like why the f he's actually kissing me when I'm so focused on work who wants to reject love you know so this is a perfect example of a real life partner relationship you know so he's reflecting back to me through that that I have to relax all is well well sometimes i don't let him to go through this whole process of doing it i just like i kind of force my kisses and hugs that's <laughs> when it's happened but i'm more and more aware that uh, actually one of my quests has been lately to actually enjoy and it's interesting because we think uh, that the feeling of joy is something static, but I realize that it's always adds. So it's always a new perception of what joy it is. So whatever joy was for me before, now it's totally different because I have a different context. I have a different reflection. And this is fascinating uh, because through this reflection, I'm realizing that actually I'm now enjoying as I think I'm enjoying. So we have this you know we have this uh habit of like okay let me just be positive and be in alignment and be steady and hey i'm observing variety i cannot be that at all times because uh you know within observing variety i'm always going to make some preferences you know that means that there are going to be some questions and some questions not always feel comfortable and i'm not talking about uncomfortable un like days hours but even if it's glimpses of that but me being aware about that and seeing the value of what costa reflects back to me can you not touch the camera oh sorry my no. legs are so long thank god i didn't run like knock it over yeah legs and yeah okay uh, anyways but what i wanted to say how much is more can you speak people want to ask <laughs> Uh, anyways guys okay what do you want to ask okay i think karen 2.0 would like to ask something karen put on go ahead i would so i wondered for a while since viola sometimes shares personal information about y'all's relationship has viola ever shared something that either shocked you or embarrassed you uh not really because this is the thing if you know a thing about us well, you're gonna know now. Maybe that, please. And how do you know? Wait, you don't even remember. Wait a second. No. He doesn't even wait. Remember no. That. Wait a second. No. What I'm saying is, even before we all, for years, every time we would go to hang out, and we would be with friends, there was really like never like boundary about this. Like we would share a lot of stuff very, very openly, and people who were around us could see, and they would be like, "Oh my gosh, two guys." Two of you are so cute. Sometimes they would witness, obviously, our contrast as well. But um, but it's like I don't think we never we never had like we would always share actually our experiences with others. So I think that's why it comes so natural. And uh, our mom would tell me things, you know, like I would be like, "Oh, how about this? This is because sometimes there will be things that happen." that I think about or that I'm experiencing, we don't get to share. It comes out in a call first. And then I'm like, you know what happened? He's like, I know, we all talked about it. And I'm like, well, here here comes the part where this like, I wanted thing. to share this with you, whatever. Costa, <laughs> Costa from his self perspective, Costa, he's not always aware about what Viola spoke about, but I am because I'm in all the calls. Right. behind the scenes you know right. and I'm like well, now you're for sure not behind the scenes because I'm getting off the freaking little thing and I'm like no privacy you know like blah 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 but honestly I don't care because I see there is a value in it and we have always been doing this among our friends so if people ask questions and one thing for sure openness and honesty is a connection and a reflection that is just very basic you know to any of our relationships whether it's friendships whether it's uh, clients whether it's like audience you know can i say something anyone no so what's coming no. is wait a second current 2.0 what comes also is that at one point i remember when i was in dance business before i met armand 
and uh, we were going to, uh, you know, you're signing up clients for experiences, for packages, for programs, competitions, whatever. And then at some point, you know, some people would say, we need sales, we need certain amount of money coming through, whatever. And, and I would say, I would think, maybe that, please. Can, no, but just really, talk. please. And then I would say, at one point I had this awareness, oh, how about if I was to be, if I, if somebody could actually be in my head, in my mind, I'm going to speak like everybody can hear every single thought I have. And that was so liberating. It was so liberating not to try to, and of course it doesn't happen all the time because we have thoughts that we're not sharing with people, but you know, this just came to mind, I don't know why, while we're talking about yeah. this. I'm sure it makes sense to you, right, okay. Karen? There so let's put, yeah. let's yeah. put it this way. We're making, we making it as open as we can stretch the openness. Obviously, yeah. I'm not going to pretend that, as he said, like, yeah, I'm, we're like sharing every single we, thought, We, we don't, but I think we're open that if it can be of help to anyone else, we don't mind it being shared. So... Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I think Vigneta has a question. So a little bit related. Um, this is only my second call and actually Anya is here. She's the one who introduced me to you guys. So thank oh, you. Oh, yay, Anya. Woot, woot. <laughs> Anishka. Um, so uh, have you both explored uh, whether what you were to each other in a past lifetime? Oh, I have a funny story for you. We do, not, we do not know exactly what we are. I, don't, I, I haven't had no interest, but speaking of like a karmic relationship of being together, when we started, um, you know, dating and meet, you know, we met each other's families. And then first year, second year, you st we started celebrating birthdays, right? So his family member's birthday, my family member's birthdays, we started becoming aware of it. We found out that all of our family's birthdays on both sides are one way or another they're like within either in the same day one day difference or two day difference the most and across four generations so like his grandfather's birthday two days before my grandma's then my his grandma's and my grandfather's the same day his nephew is two days before me my grandma is two days before his mom uh, his dad and my grandfather within one day. It's literally like it goes on a on a cousin's levels as well now So like my aunt who is like my 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 mom's cousin and then his cousin are the same day I mean so many that we just keep discovering them along the way. It's it's really cray cray but <laughs> but that's I mean that's probably like the closest I could get to not answer your question, but to tell you about this awareness of like, you know, we had to meet the way we met as well was in a line for restroom in a club, even though both of us were never really party people. And his friend and was talking to him in Spanish about me and thinking I don't speak Spanish, but I learned Spanish when I was 13 by watching soap operas. I mean, all of these like, you know, random things not to get in too much into detail but to get that clarity i do have to say that i do have to say that uh you know and especially going back to the conversation of relationships you know what tova was sharing with us you know um so i never at, at the moment i met costa i wasn't aware of abraham or any kind of teachings I was applying deliberately, you know, in terms of like living my life. But I did have a clarity about certain things, you know, like people were saying like you, uh, you know, like you live in New York, it's very hard to meet someone. I was like, well, so exactly because there are so many people, if I, I, I cannot be the only person that wants uh, traditional quote-unquote, you know, uh, ser or quote-unquote serious relationship that must be someone else and I'm gonna meet this person. So I kind of like was pampering myself into that and then softly I was actually taking out appreciating what I really liked about my ex without consciously 
adding into working on it like least but then I meet Costa where had like so many synchronicities in oh terms of gosh. that and from the beginning I have to say that for some reason whatever there are a lot of things that triggers in me you know that Costa reflects but not up to the extent in comparison to the relationships I used to have before. Uh, and then obviously meeting Abraham Hicks, you know, and then st starting applying their teachings and then Viola came out, you know, and all of that, that's just added new layers of awareness into this relationship that I always considered, uh, you know, amazing, not to eliminate the parts of us being in the questions or having different opinions about something but always with the sense of like oh okay we think different but there is some common essence you know for us what's happening within me you know what i can do to see it from a different angle instead of like it's you well i actually do that sometimes it's you it's you you know we, we had this joke long time ago uh, which has expanded, which was like, if someone of us is like, is thrown off about something, uh, I would be, or we would be either, you know, who plays this game of I'm thrown off, I'm like cranky. And either of us would be, well, it has nothing to do with me. But then we realize that it has everything to do with us because we yeah, live yeah. together. It's a, a oh, direct one of my questions that I love to, to say was always like, what you want me now to change to make you happy? And he'll be like, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, I, was, I knew what I was saying, of course. And just saying yes, it would be like, you know, discharge this tensity, yeah. you know, that was going on. I think, Teresa, you had a question. I don't know if you still do, but uh, if you wanted to say something. Um, I will have a question because it came up during the call and then Armand just said it again. Um, but it's not about like a, a personal thing. Oh, it can be about anything, whatever you're curious about, yeah. Okay, well, I was wondering if you could just tell me from your perspective, when you say softly, what that means to you and what you want me to interpret that to mean? Softly in terms of uh, what, contrast or? Well, you say a lot, like, um, I mean, during your meditations, you say like softly observe your breathing. And then Armand just said, you know, I softly think about these things that I like about my ex. I don't know what necessarily softly means. Is that like, like not so seriously well well what i i mean he will tell you what he means but what what i'm getting from that is you get to the steady place whichever way you can whatever puts you in a steady place and then you observe it a little bit from a distance i'm sure we, we all are talks about this as well you don't um you don't run run immediately into like it's more like an observation than a thinking thought in that moment. But in order to do that, you want to get to perspective, to steady. So whatever puts you at steady, whatever tool puts you at steady. Um, it's kind of like any of these like troublesome things or inviting contrast or asking questions. We can be deliberate about it when we um, when we are steady first. So if there is something that you want to give a different perspective to, it's kind of like when you feel good and you look at something that troubles you. Um, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, right? So just get to that steady position first and then look at something and you'll see it already from a different perspective. Yeah. So I think that will be like a s softer way of doing it instead of like you going into that, you know, as a knee jerk reaction. And then, you know, at some point you get tired and you have to meditate anyway. So you can kind of just get ahead of it. Yeah. yeah for me, it's kind of like similar, but, um, Softer, when I mean softer, is that uh, because I'm looking at the same thing, mirror or reflection that used to throw me off now, because I'm softer in my perspective in relationship to that, then it doesn't seem such as a big deal. For me, for example, because I'm doing actually with you, uh, Teresa, I'm doing the, for the second time actually, 
the steady change method and the first time I couldn't when I got into the evening meditations I didn't continue I couldn't do it I wasn't ready I was fussing about that it was difficult to me uncomfortable and but now I didn't get to the evening meditations that I get into two meditations a day and I'm very uh, deliberate and intentional about them and what I'm from my perspective is when I when I breathe and then when I do something that doesn't require too much thinking then I have a softer perspective that I can look anything to and then it doesn't seem a problem anymore mm -hmm. in comparison to what it used to be you know softer meaning not soft in a sense just I'm soft but soft in a sense of like my my thoughts are not a, my intellect is not running there is not such mo mo such a huge momentum in that in the direction of what the problem is and it's just dispersed and dissolved a little bit i know you want to talk i want to talk come on blah blah blah, that, blah, that, blah, that, blah. That. okay okay oh my god guys before i know it's it's a, it's a long call that's why and i want to quickly get, no i want to get to this other part as well whoever wants to stick around again it's the easiest way for us to share a couple of things or what we have going on uh, just so I'm sure you see it from some of the newsletters, but also, you know, kind of to keep you updated. Our book is coming along very nicely, almost there, almost in a phase where it's going to go into the like design and then publishing and all of that. So that's really, really wonderful. Um, every uh, three months we start the new cycle of our Difference Makers program. There's a lot of people on this call who are already there. If you're curious about it, if you feel like these monthly calls are not um, enough and you want more, whether for your own steadiness or you wanna, um, or you have practice and you're nurturing a lot of people, it's a great, great opportunity to be in a in a wonderful group of people. Whether you're asking questions or just very powerful there. group of people. Yes, very, very, very. Um, and then we also have um, our steady change method program that it's currently also running. Uh, we're gonna start a new new cycle in July as well. Uh, that's a it's a transformative program, really. I'll talk more about it on social media and on our YouTube coming soon. I already named one of the videos. It's gonna be called "Shameless Promotion of What We Do," meaning like I'm gonna put everything over there because um, if you followed my latest post from yesterday. Um, it took me, as I mentioned, a few years to get into this whole thing and I was tiptoeing around it. We don't want to come across as salesmen selling you this and that. Everyone can make decisions for themselves. Everyone can resonate with how they want to interact with what we do. But we got to kind of talk about it for a moment so people know. So that's what we're doing right now. So that steady change method is it's a it's a group program, but uh, it's an online thing. You have access to this these tracks for 63 days it's a really like a transformative thing and uh, also i've started as of march taking private pe private clients which i haven't i've done sporadically few before and i have wonderful wonderful experience with that with guiding people to their own steadiness in combination with conversations with me and then we all are privately when you know uh, when necessary whether it's for your own personal thing you want to find steadiness within your own mind body balance whether it's about your business this one seems to be very popular if you want to like uh, you know make more money or if you want to transition into um into a different area of work we've had like some really brilliant brilliant experiences and results with that i finally started to do the programs with him and i've been joking yeah like last, for week, two years, last week yeah for two years i you know because i see him as my husband so now we're ready actually and it's beautiful because so i'm doing all these sessions and when we're in the sessions we have we play this role of me being the quote-unquote student, you know, and then Costa being a coach. And, oh my God, I was telling him, holy shit, <laughs> you're fucking amazing. Yesterday, so, he was so funny. He was like, oh my gosh, you're a brilliant coach. Like, yeah, okay. anyways. 
And that's one thing. And then we have our in-person oh, yes. retreat. In oh, yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, this is happening in like three and a half weeks. Yeah, we have a very powerful group coming in person in Coral Gables. Uh, the hotel is very luxurious, but not expensive. Especially it if you're sharing the room. Yes. So take a look on that. It's happening May 20, 21, 22. And we're gonna stay a few days before and after. And obviously, don't come just for us. Come for Viola, because that's the main thing. And then we're just gonna be an edit uh, you know, bonus. Bonus. As a bonus track, As a we're bonus gonna be having to this, that. entertaining yes. you. It's a stunning hotel in Miami. You know, Miami has flights from all over. It's only 10 minutes away from the airport, very yes. convenient. And we did it that it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, in a way that you can fly in on a su uh, Friday morning and then uh, fly back on Sunday evening, unless... Surprise us! Surprise us! Come, delight yourself. Come Unless, have fun. Mi vida. What? That's all you... What? What are you laughing about? Oh. Did somebody else say I wanted to Anyways, say something? Anyways, that's it. So, guys, if you have more quit Melanie inspired. I'm practicing my British accent. Did somebody say we need like a Netflix special? <laughs> guys, don't you think, don't you think that we should be, that, that like yeah. we should have our YouTube amped up and show more of this, not just we all eclipse? I really think yeah. that's, that we're ready, right, Mivida? We are ready, right? And then he would have some segments on his own, I will have segments on my own, and then together, and... Th <laughs> Finally, Mivida, you're ready. Yes. And me too, of course, but you know, but you. Oh, Melancita, tell us what you wanted to say. <laughs> oh, I wanted to ask about your programs. Is there an order in which you like them? Done I think so. No. Inspired, no? Just inspired by I think okay, so. so if you have curiosity about this, guys, send me an email and I'll set a time to walk you through it. Like I've done this with, okay. with so many people on this call. I told you about it. In May, I can take on few new people because I have already people that are in the program. I do not do this like eight hours, five days a week. Like, uh, well, few people that are on the call now, I'm not going to pull out the names, but they know that I told them that I used to do this once every four months, but then I got this momentum and I felt steady enough. Because and I felt he's ready more enough. steady yeah. and I've, me too. And I felt... I felt steadier enough and now I'm ready to not to to do it every month. I do not need the break like I used to before. I can, you know, um, I can drive quite awesome energy along there. I love to ask a lot of questions in these private programs. Poke, poke, poke. And then and then if, if I poke you too much, then I bring in Weola to harmonize all of that. So, you know, I kind of feel really backed up in that sense. I'm like, I can't go wrong in like being a coach because like, ha, all I can say is like, okay, let's now tone it in. I'm gonna unfocus over here and I know it's gonna be harmonized. Even with Roman yesterday, there was like a like a that we made like a lot of movement on this one topic and you know all it took after that was for him to listen to the well-being appreciation and he was all synced up so reach out to me send me the email guys whoever is interested to hear about it now if you feel called to know about it i'll find a time we'll talk about this um and then uh when it comes to everything else about the group programs they they are set in a way so the first time the enrollment opens up and you feel called, you just go for it. Awesome. Well, that's it. Well, that was lovely. Thank you so much for coming for our Netflix special. And for now, lovingly, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love you guys. Thank you guys. Love you, love, love you. you. See you soon. Our mom will send you. Oh yeah, we're gonna send the recording soon. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Thank you, Bye. 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 Love you. Bye. <laughs> ciao, guys. Bye. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Bye.